In this video, we are going to introduce angle modulations. In an angle modulation, the information that we want to transmit, the modulating signal, will be printed, will be stored in the angle of a sinusoidal carrier, in the phase of a carrier or in the frequency of a carrier. Therefore, we will have two variants of angle modulations. We have phase modulations, where the phase is modified according to the modulating signal. And we have frequency modulations when the frequency, the instantaneous frequency of the carrier is modified according to the modulating signal. It is possible to have a common representation for, the, uh, for these two types of modulations, the phase and frequency modulations, because basically the information is inside of the angle of a carrier and this angle is going to be modified as a function of the modulating signal. In this common representation, the angle of the carrier in general will be written as the term associated to the frequency omega c times t plus a term phi of t and the information will be in this term phi of t. It is interesting to remember the definition of instantaneous frequency of a given sinusoid. The instantaneous frequency in radians per second is just equal to the derivative of the argument of this sinusoid. In this case, the derivative of zeta of t. In hertz, we only need to divide by 2 times pi the previous amount. This is the definition of instantaneous frequency of a sinusoid. Taking into account this expression for the argument, the angle, now the instantaneous frequency in hertz can be written as the carrier frequency in hertz plus one times uh, one divided by two times pi, the derivative of the information term phi of t. This is the instantaneous frequency in hertz. Now, if we assume this notation for the argument of the carrier, the term of the frequency plus phi of t, and with the definition of the instantaneous frequency in hertz for this notation, now the phase modulation is a modulation with, where phi of t is proportional to the modulating signal. The proportionality constant, Kp, is called the phase deviation constant. And we have a frequency modulation when the difference between the instantaneous frequency and the carrier frequency, delta Fi of t, is proportional to the modulating signal. The proportionality constant is called uh, the frequency deviation constant, Kf. And this deviation of the instantaneous frequency with respect to the carrier frequency is proportional to the derivative of phi of t. Is this derivative divided by 2 times phi. The definition for these two modulations uh, is very simple. A phase modulation, phi of t proportional to the modulating uh, signal. In a frequency modulation, the derivative of the uh, term phi of t is proportional to the modulating signal with two proportionality constants, Kp and Kf, the phase deviation constant and the frequency deviation constant. There is a very close relationship between a phase and a frequency modulation. And to analyze this relationship, we will compare the expression for phi of t and the expression for the derivative of phi of t for these two modulations. For the frequency, for, sorry, for the phase modulation, phi of t is just proportional to m of t, kp times m of t, and therefore the derivative is just kp times the derivative of m of t. And for the frequency modulation, the derivative of phi of t is just 2 times pi kf times mt is proportional to the modulating signal, and therefore phi of t 
is proportional to the integral of the modulating signal with this uh, proportionality constant 2 times pi kf. Taking into account these expressions for the term phi of t and for the derivative of phi of t, it's straightforward to see that to modulate a modulating signal with a frequency modulator is equivalent to first to integrate this signal and then to use a phase modulation. And to modulate with a phase modulation a given signal is equivalent to first to derivate the corresponding signal and then to apply a frequency modulator.